Okay, you're watching. Quick review here. Quick little review. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions that you're going to do as practice ones on the top of that paper here in a second. But let's just review a little bit first. Uh, these are tough. I understand that. It wouldn't have been quite as hard had I done sigma and pi bonds in Chem 1 like I'm going to do with them this year uh, with you guys. However, uh, even with that, carbon does weird stuff. Carbon does this hybridization thing where he combines S and P orbitals together. By the way, for those, yesterday was a horrible class for you guys because half of you were out from part of the class, the other half were out from part of the class. We had the uh, announcements in between and the, um, uh, what do you call it, between as well, the break. So there was no continuity. <laughs> and on top of all that, I realized while I was doing it, I wanted to do it while I was doing it in a different order. So the, if you watch the video, I jammed that entire class that kind of got spread out for us over two periods and half of us were there for one, half of us there for the other. I combined that into one nice, neat, tight package in um, the afternoon class. And that's what I posted up on YouTube. So it will make a lot more sense to you if you watch that. Because I don't have the time to reteach that whole lesson again. Let me just say a few things. First of all, the sigma versus pi bond. The sigma bond is going to be a head-to-head -head overlapping. All right, it doesn't matter if it's an, if it's an S orbital that's head-to-head -head overlapping or a P orbital or an SP hybrid orbital. This is head-to-head -head overlapping like it is in this case. It is going to be, well, a couple of things. First of all, it's going to allow free rotation. All right, in the case of carbon, it will mean if he's got all of them are like that, it's going to be an SP3 hybrid. All right, and it's going to involve four bonds all in a tetrahedron. Okay, there's going to be a tetrahedral angles around there, which are 109.5. I'm going to ask you questions like that in these examples I'm going to do in a second. If I have C2H4, okay, if I were to draw that out. By the way, here's another thing that was bad for you guys that I fixed for the afternoon class. Guess what I can do now? Right on the board. Yay. See? So um, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that with you guys, right? It didn't work for you. Okay. So C2H6 is actually looks like this if you were to draw it out. Right? C2H4 would look like this. Got it? All right. And then C2H2 would look like this. Here's your C2. Here's your H. Here's your other H. That's two H's. And, of course, in order for that to work, you have to have a triple bond for him, a double bond for him, a single bond for him. All right. Okay, that's what they would be drawn like. That's what they'd be written in a molecular formula like. Okay? And the questions I would ask you would be the same. For this guy right here, which is drawn out here, what would you expect for the hybridization? What has to have happened for that hybridization? It had to have been sp2 hybrids, because the other p that wasn't used to hybridize it is used as that double bond, as that second bond. And that is a pi bond, because there's a pi bond here, and there's a sigma bond here. Pi and sigma together give you a double bond, which we saw written like that. Okay, and if I have the model, looks like this. Okay, so all these different ways to show the same thing, and I know it's confusing, and that's why I'm about to do some examples. And lastly, of course, um, you know that guy has three total bonds around him, 120 degree angles. Notice 120 degrees because they're all one plane. One, two, three things, one plane, three times 120, 360. You can't do that with tetrahedron because this is in a three dimensional structure. It's not just in one plane. All right, 3D. Uh, this guy right here, he's the sp1 hybrid, two total bonds, and 180 degree angles. Why? Because they're going to be in a straight line. 180 degrees is a straight line, and that's what these guys will be. Um, the two extra Ps that weren't used when they hybridized, that's why it's an sp1. The other two Ps weren't used. They are used to form pi bonds. That's my little review, but believe me, as I said, I have to just walk in. You should watch the video I put up from last uh, from the afternoon class. Way better. I was able to write on the board. I did it in a different order, all right, and it made a lot more sense. And I'm, you know, that's the other thing, too. Yeah, first time I teach anything, it isn't going to be as good. It's going to take me a little practice as well, just like it does for you guys. Speaking of practice, let's do it. At the top of your paper, don't make this too big. We're going to make a chart. I'm going to have several element or compounds here, and you're going to have to make these up, spread them out. The largest one's probably going to have to be your Lewis structure, <coughs> and then your sigma, your pi, your orbitals, your hybrid, and your angle. Okay? So make that at the top of your paper. I'm going to do probably four or five examples, so don't write too large.
These are very much like the examples you're going to get in the homework today. I'm going to give you. All right. I'll let you start on that today. Okay, you got that copy? I start with a really easy guy. Okay? These are the kind of questions. I, by the way, I was just looking over some prior AP exams. Uh, I just downloaded them in PDF form to my computer, and they were specific to these kind of questions, uh, bonding. And sure enough, these are the kind of questions they're going to ask you. One of the things they could ask you, well, first of all, is just to draw a Lewis structure. We could certainly do that, right? A Lewis structure is just, if you don't remember, um, you know, wouldn't you all agree that this would be a Lewis structure, right? Hydrogen has one electron. The other hydrogen has one electron. They form a bond. They're both happy, right? So that's your Lewis structure for that guy. I don't think I need to go over that again. We did those back in Chem 1. We are going to do harder ones, and I will go over it again for the harder ones when we get to them later in this chapter, but that's an easy one. And by the way, you know, I'm just going to draw this over to the side and I'll erase it. A minute ago, I was drawing guys like this. You know, right? And I, I do all these, and I use dashes. What is a dash? Couldn't I have drawn, I could have drawn this guy like that. Don't do it. But I could have drawn that guy like that, right? A dash just represents a pair of electrons. That's all. So another way I could draw this guy would be, it's a pain in the neck to draw all those dots. So we just put dashes around, right? Okay. Now, let's get back to this. So my little structure would look like this. What do you think? The, remember, you don't have to draw this, but hydrogen has one S1, and the other hydrogen has one S1. So what's overlapping there? Two S orbitals, right? So what kind of a bond would you expect you would have for that simple bond right there? A single bond. What do you think? A sigma. You'd have one sigma bond. Would you have any pi bonds in this guy? No. You'd have zero pi bonds, correct? And the orbital orbitals that are actually overlapping for an HH bond would be what? Two what shaped orbitals? S. So it'd be two S orbitals. I don't want you to think it's a two S. <laughs> I should probably say that there, there are two S or an S and an S overlapping. You know what I mean? In other words, it's not like one S, two, two S. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying a second energy level S. I'm saying there are two S orbitals that are overlapping. Okay. All right. Um, so good. You got uh, electron dot notation, one sigma, zero pi bonds. S, oh, let's just matter of fact, instead of, so we don't get confused, just put S orbitals are overlapping. Um, the uh, hybridization, is there any hybridization that happened in this guy? Did he smash orbitals together? No, so there's none. And uh, the bond angles, that's an easy one. What's the bond angle for this guy? 180, right? It's 180. They're in a straight line. Okay? All right, let's do another one. I started with an easy one. We'll get a little bit more difficult ones. Let's take water. Now, water is a little bit different. Different. We're going to talk about this more later, but I'll explain when we get to the Vesper theory. You're going to have to just kind of take my my. Um, you're going to have to take my uh, uh, word for it at this point. We are going to do the Vesper theory in about a week, but for right now, we could probably do the electron dot notation for water, can't we? Right. We have two H's and one O. We know H looks like this. And we know, and we have two of them. We have O looks like this, right? So what would I probably do for the for the um, uh, notation? I think I'd probably put like you know an H here and an H there, right? Wouldn't you have done that in Chem One? Again, we just kind of filled it using the octet rule and some very very basic ones in Chem One. We're going to learn why this guy is weirder than you think when we talk about the Vesper theory in a little bit. But for now, we can still answer the questions. Sigma bonds pretty much are going to be single bonds, correct? How many single bonds do you have here? How many sigma bonds will you have here? Two. Everybody agree? There's a sig sig I could have also driven. I could have also drawn that like this, couldn't I? Right? That would be correct because a dash is a shared pair of electrons. I have two sigma bonds. Any pi bonds? No. <coughs> Careful. What's overlapping here? What orbitals are overlapping here? What do you think? Well, let's look. The hydrogen we know only has one shaped orbital. What is it? S. But the, but the oxygen would be written out like this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p what? What do you think? He has eight total electrons. So how many more would he need? 
Come on, it's not that hard. I've got two here, right? I've got two here. So he needs four more, correct? How would they look? Don't have to draw this. You don't have to draw this. Just one. How would they look? They look like this. They went one at a time. Hans rule. Come back and pair up. So what do you think? Head-to-head -head overlapping of a P with an S orbital, right? That makes sense? So you'd have both an S and P orbital. I don't want to know how many. I just want to know what's overlapping. S and P's are overlapping. Both S and P's. Now, I'm going because, and that's, uh, for this guy, that's all I'm going to say. You're going to learn, I'm going to leave these two guys blank for a reason. It's not what you might think. You might think to yourself, well, this guy should be 180 degrees. But it turns out, because of the Vesper theory, these electrons actually count for something. So we're going to leave these guys blank for right now. We're going to come back and do them. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to do them in a separate chart for doing this uh, in a couple of, uh, well, probably a week or so. Uh, but just trust me that this is not as easy as it looks. All right. Um, all right, good enough. Let's do the next one. HF. This should be another easy one. See if you can do this one on your own. I purposely put this easy one up here. Fill in the entire thing. You can do the entire thing for this guy on your own. All agree that would be HF, right? Everybody's good with that. You could have drawn it with the two dots there, or you could draw with the air, with the line. That's fine. Uh, you all would agree that that's a sigma bond. Only one bond, a single bond, sigma bond. Good. Um, no pi bonds. And you would all, I hope, agree that this would be an S and a P orbital jo joining together, and the hybridization none, and the angle 180 again, right? I'll go with that. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to get to some of the you know carbon guys. We get to the carbon ones. Things get harder. So we want to do these, you know, take our time with it. CH4. Okay. Now to draw the Lewis structure, you can't show tetrahedrons in a Lewis structure. You don't show the three-dimensional geometry. So you would simply draw it. Oopsie, what did I do? Green there. C H H H H. I mean that's all you would do. Right? You can't show that this is going to be a tetrahedron, but it, you probably know from the prior yesterday that it's going to be. All right. Now, how many sigma bonds do I have? It's not that hard. Single bonds are sigma bonds. What are they? How many? Four. Good. Any pi bonds? Nope. No pi bonds. All right. By the way, you're probably going to want to put lines so you don't think 40 or 20 or something like that. I don't know. Um, what is overlapping here? Careful. The, for every hydrogen, it's an S, correct? But what is it overlapping with if I've got four single bonds around the carbon? Is it overlapping with a P? No. Is it overlapping with an S of carbon? No. If it's an SP3 hybrid, that's what it's overlapping with. Remember, if it has four bonds, it has to have SP3, one S and three Ps. That's how I have to have four bonds, a total number. So it's going to be an S overlapping with an sp3 hybrid. That's what's actually overlapping there. Whereas these were an S and a P overlapping. Here an S and an S overlapping. Here was an S and a P overlapping. Here it's an S and an sp3, which is that elongated balloon rather than the dumbbell shape. Okay, which you have to kind of go back and look at that. How would you know that? Again, so you go. How would I know that? Four things bound around carbon tells me I must have an sp3 hybrid because sp3, three and one is four, four total bonds. Got it? All right. So the hybridization is, of course, sp3 hybrid for the carbon. And if it's an sp3 hybrid and I have four equal things around him, what must the angles be and the shape? 
tetrahedron, if you don't remember the angle, it's 109.5 for the tetrahedron. Okay? All right. Let's do another one. Now, don't write anything. Don't write that word. I just realized something. Um, uh, I want you to draw it. I guess, I guess you could write it, but basically, if I drew it out like this, it would probably be better. I would do that. On, I know I did that on the worksheet here, so. Okay. Believe it or not, some crazy professors love to do this. I don't know why. But they'll give you, remember my first, yesterday when I was just, I had those spinning molecules around, remember that? There'll be professors who will say, count how many sigma bonds are in this molecule, and it'll be this big monstrous thing. All right? There are idiots that want to do this. I don't know why. It's just redundant and stupid. But either way, can you count how many sigma bonds are in here? What do you think? Sigma bonds will be what kind of bonds? Single bonds. One, two, three, four. So we got four sigma bonds. How many pi bonds? Be careful. Be careful. Think about it. And look, maybe even look back. One pi bond. Oh, and we're wrong about that. Four. Why are we wrong about four? Because there's one here. I, I, I made the same mistake you did. I can't. Unfortunately, I've noticed with this new com this computer I'm using, it won't let me get an eraser up. I mean, is this the? I used to be able to press this and get an eraser. Oh, I guess I could just hit this, right? I never had this before. Is that right? Yeah. All right, let's try that. Yeah, good. All right, good. Um, all right, so five, because there's a sigma bond in between here. And that's, by the way, same mistake we all made just a second ago is what those professors are looking for. Oh, yeah, you forgot about this guy. That's what they, and then they'll throw double bonds in there, and they'll throw cyclic compounds in there. And they're always trying to catch it. And it's very easy to do because you have in your back of your head sigma single bonds. Yeah, and that's correct. But there's also a sigma bond in a double bond. And there's also a sigma bond in a triple bond. So it gets very confusing, and everybody makes dumb mistakes like that. So five of them and one pi bond. Got it? Okay. What kind of hybridization must be around these carbons? Now, all I care about is the same. I'm going to ask you a problem like this. I'm going to care about the carbons, the center. What kind of? Because I could have a longer compound with other guys there. But I'm going to say about the central carbon that I'm drawing. And, of course, around that, either of these carbons, what kind of hybridization is there? Come on. SP2. So it's going to be S to SP2. The S's are coming from the hydrogen, correct? Right? And the SP2 is coming from the carbon. Now, if that's the shape, of that, that's the, the, size, the, the, the structure of this molecule, what must the angles be? Here he is. What must the angles be? 120, right? You got three things bound around it, 120. By the way, that's going to also be part of the Vesper theory. I'll talk about why. They want to get, they basically repel each other. What's in the, out, what's in the outer shell of all these guys? Electrons, right? What charge do electrons have? Negative. So they repel. They repel each other, these, these atoms do. So that's why they get as far apart as humanly possible, until, well, as far apart as, apart as atomly possible. And th uh, they basically, you know, push the other guy around until they're, they're going to be as far apart. All right. Um, good enough. I have one more I want to do, but I'm going to, if, if you have room for it, how much room you got? All right. One more I want to do. I'm going to do a, a one that has multiple things in it, okay? Uh, so let me just erase this whole thing. And he'll be down here somewhere. All right. Let's see if I can do a guy with multiple things. Now, I, I don't know, if, because I'm putting multiple things in there, it's not necessarily going to have just one answer for each of, for each of these things, because I may have more than one. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to use a chart for this guy, right? Because I'm going to have a guy with a triple bond in here. I'm going to have a guy, you know, I just want to talk about it. So why don't we do, we'll just talk about it. Maybe you could draw some arrows or whatever. But let me just draw him somewhere. Or you know what, the back of this is blank if you want to put him on the back. All right? So if I've got a guy like this. Okay. 
draw that guy. Now, that's pretty big, but he's not as big as you'll see in some cases, and it doesn't have any aromatic or, or uh, triple bonds. This is an H, H, C, triple bond C, C, H, double bond C, F, H. And again, you won't be able to make this into a chart. I can't ask one like this necessarily on the test unless I specifically point out what bond or what atom I'm talking about. But let's just talk about this guy a little bit. Maybe we could draw some stuff in it. All right? What do you think? What, am I doing? There we go. what do you think? How do I have my color charts up here? Line side line colors. I guess I could. That's all they give you? My other one had other colors. Do that, do that anyway. Well, all right. Thanks. Okay. Well, obviously I'm using green. Um, all right. Let's take a look at this guy right there. What would you say? Really? <laughs> really? Ugh. All right. Let's take a look at this guy right here. What would you say that guy would be? What kind of uh, bond? Well, it's a single bond. Let's, 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 let's just talk about it. He's a single bond, correct? Um, the, between the H and the C, all right, we're going to have an F, obviously an S from the H, but what is he going to be bound to? Since this C has a triple bond on that side, you know, what must the hybridization be for that carbon? An SP1 or just SP, right? So that's what that bond is. It's an SSP bond. And the angle between here and here, right, all these guys are going to be what? From here, you know, again, that's why I said I can't have one answer in a chart, because this will be one angle. What will that be? be? From, from here, here to here. All these guys will be in a straight line, correct? 180 degrees. That's why we can't really write all this stuff down. Um, but you all, as long as you can understand that. This carbon, what's the, SP, what's the hybridization of that carbon? SP1, right, SP1, he has a triple bond, and his angle is 180, and the same thing will be true for this guy, basically the same thing for that guy. All right, same thing there. Now, let's go on to this guy, this carbon here, the bond between here and there, and again, I, I know this is going to be weird, I'm not going to ask you to do this on the test, but the bond between there and there is going to be a bond between an S, right, and a what? An S. P, not one, two, because this guy is a bond between here, and this, he's bound to that carbon, who is an SP2 hybrid. Got it? So the angles around these guys are going to be 120, right? How about if I asked you in the entire compound? Oh, let's, let's finish this up again. This is a good one here. The carbon to the uh, uh, F. The F has what orbital he's sharing? Where he is. What do you think? The P. So he's got a P because the last thing you would have written for F would have been P like this, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you all agree that regardless of what came before it, the last thing you would have written would have looked like that. So he's sharing with this P. Good. And this is a P to an SP2, correct? Right? Got it? Because this same carbon is also got a double bond in him. That's an SP2 hybrid. All right? And finally, this guy right here, this bond right here, would be an S to an SP2. Now, let's see if we can not screw this up. How many sigma bonds are in that entire molecule? Yeah, I know. It's a pain. <laughs> How many sigmas in the entire molecule? Be careful. What do you think? I heard six and seven. I believe it is seven, but let's double check. One for this single bond. One for this triple bond. One for this single bond. One here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like seven to me. All right. How many pi bonds are in this molecule? Careful now for this one. No, it's not two. Not one. Three. The double bond has a sigma and a pi, correct? But the triple bond has a sigma and two pi's. Two pi. Ooh, that's a lot of pi's. She's my dear. I should be playing that song from. What is that? Warrant? Is that Warrant? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
that pretty good? See, I told you it would get, I would be able to explain. I said yesterday it was going to be tough, but you would be able to explain. Now, I've got the worksheet for you to do and start out right now. I'll give it to you right now.